Good morning. Welcome to the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. This is uh, Bible Studies with the Sincatis. I'm MT Clark, and we're joined today by Arthur and Susanna Sincati. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, let's just open up in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. Uh, it's um, only 7.30 in the morning, and we're already keenly aware mm-hmm. of it so many ways as we drove in the fog here this morning um your majesty is just uh so before us Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um in front of us and replete in our our midst we thank you for it lord god and we pray that you would reveal yourself in your word this morning to us open the eyes of our hearts and our minds lord god to receive your word and um uh, it's our daily bread our nourishment uh, it um, grips our hearts and uh, directs us through uh, uh, the pathways of life. And we thank you for it. Ask for your blessing over our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, amen. We pray for Bob and Louise as well, Lord God. Amen. They're away visiting a, a reunion of a church that Bob planted in Pennsylvania. We just speak blessing over that over that reunion right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, indeed. So uh, let's see where to start. A hmm. couple of a um, couple of little disclaimers this morning, or, or okay. uh, lead-in statements. Oh, you know, I, I received a what I really feel is a prophetic word for the church uh, this week. That when um, Peter e- invokes the Joel prophecy mm-hmm. in Acts chapter two, you know, um, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, uh, like never before seen, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, when he invo- evokes that and speaks it by the Spirit, he also pushes it forward. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. Right. So you already was, knew that. Yeah, so it was a message. Was a heavy it was a for message me. for. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. You know, it was a message for back then, but like all Scripture, it, it's to be used by us today too. Yeah, but so. I, you know, I just got when he said it, he th- he throws it forward, and the never before seen that we will experience. You know, it won't be like you know, the year 33 uh, mm-hmm. A.D. when Peter's uh, preaching and and 3,000 are saved. Um, it'll be you know it'll it's going to be a new uh, outpouring. Obviously, it'll have similarities. It's not going to be uh, it'll be consistent with Scripture. But he's he, when he proclaims it, he's throwing it forward to to us you know, or all generations in between. You know, as I discussed when you know before starting this this broadcast or podcast. Um, I had a dream this morning, and yeah. I shared about it, and it's on the blog, and it's uh, on the podcast too. Um, but the 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 scripture that you're you're referencing is um, Acts two sixteen and yes. beyond. It goes, but this is what this was spoke, and it's highlighted, uh, was spoken <laughs> by the pro- prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm-hmm. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. What well, do you for it? Like and, 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 he had the dream. And I had the dream. Oh, okay. I'm an old man. Or not <laughs> okay. not as old as some, but, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I share about it. And I yes. make many disclaimers in my in my thing. But, yeah. Okay. And, and he'll pour out, you know, and it goes on in 18. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above and the signs on the earth beneath, mm-hmm. you know, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and, and the moon into blood before right. the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Great and awesome and day it shall Lord. come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. And and that's it, you know. So, yes. it's, it's yeah, there's going to be spiritual gifts. Things mm-hmm. are going to happen. There's going to be signs. But that day of the Lord is coming. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our focus to be... Um, you know, proclaiming the gospel until that day, and mm-hmm. it can happen at any day. We're not waiting mm-hmm. for, sp- for specific signs because Christ can come back any time. Exactly. That's right. you know. That's right. And just to, to back that up for you, um, Joel is found in Joel 2, verses 28 through 32. Yeah. Anybody wanted to look that up? All right. Joel 2, 20, uh, what was it? 28 Joel, to 32. 28 to 32, the original. Mm hmm reference in Joel. So the other thing that I wanted to say is this morning, uh, as Susanna and I were um, having breakfast, uh, I was really led to listen to um, one of my favorites, 
which is the White Horse Inn. Mm-hmm. Um, really excellent roundtable discussion. But these guys are like superstars. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they do what we're trying to do, mm-hmm. um, but they're superstars at it, and they're mm-hmm. really great. Now they're the theologians and the pastors. These uh-huh. are, uh, Shane Rosenthal is a is a theo- you know brilliant theologian, mostly from Reformed tradition. And they're drawing out just pearls out of Scripture. They're doing a study on uh, going through Genesis, and they were talking about the life of Jacob today. Marvelous stuff. Um, and we're doing the same thing, uh, but I just you, you want to be clear that we're, we're just regular guys. Right. We're just regular folks. Right. Susanna mm-hmm. and I and, and Mark are just regular folk. But, you know, Paul said that uh, who um, can counsel uh uh, God, but we have the mind mind of Christ. Right, we do uh, have we, the mind. We, of Christ. we still have the mind of Christ, mm-hmm. and and I'm I'm believing that um the, the that what we're sharing is rich. It's certainly rich to me. I I am so yeah, I am so pupiled and and taught by what I get. I, I sometimes I'm just so excited, like you know, what are we gonna do next week, Lord? It's, right. Yeah. What do you got for us? You <laughs> what do you know, got? Because, what do you yeah. got? Um, so, and and the people that are listening, yeah, I just encourage you to uh, dig into the scripture. Let the Lord speak to you directly. Uh, you're like like James says. Um, Elijah was a man just like like anybody else, and he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years, and then he prayed again, and it rained. Mm. So there's a there's this sense of the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Any of us who are willing to humble ourselves and come before God, um, it, he will receive. You yeah. know, he, he resists the proud, yes. but a, a contrite spirit and a broken heart, or a broken heart and a contrite spirit, it's, i got to straighten those two out. Um, <laughs> uh, he Thank will not okay despise. Mm. And so that, that it's not a seminary uh, diploma. Um, that's a good thing. I'm not, you know, some people call it the cemetery. I'm not criticizing that. We had one pastor that used to say analysis is the paralysis of the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sure, there are uh, <clears throat> there are degrees to which we can over-intellectualize this thing and try to dissect it so carefully, and we become so stealth in Scripture that there's no room for the Holy Spirit to, to speak to mm-hmm. your heart and say, hey, you know, hey, I'm in the room, what about me? Uh, but um, uh, I just wanted to make that. I just I just wanted to express that. Uh, so uh, that was another thing. Uh, today's study is drawn. Now the thing that led me to listen to the White Horse in was because today's study is drawn from a conversation that um, started to have with uh, Deacon here at Rock Solid Church at a graduation party last week. Mark was there. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, oh, I see. this is uh, a deacon unnamed. We will yes, not name. Yes. We'll protect the innocent. Yeah. But he draw out. He just drew out this this question mark. Good. And I was uh, ready to jump right in with one of my perky answers. That's and then, it. And then I said, you know what? Let me study that out. And I'll let me let's get back to you on that. But um, this is a, a a rich subject matter. But the thing is, like, why is it foreign to sit around on a Friday night at a graduation party and talk about the scripture? It shouldn't be. Right. And and so the White Horse Inn, uh, the reason why they gave it this name was because it's, it's fashioned after a Cambridge Inn or tavern where the masses would gather... Um, and discuss the events of the time, particularly the Reformation. Mm-hmm. And through the, this White Horse Inn, the Reformation came to the English-speaking world. Mm-hmm. Okay, Just regular folk sitting around the table, talking about what's going on, mm-hmm. engaging about the Scripture, what's God doing, what's God doing in these times. And, and that's what we want to know, right? What, what's, hey, let's face it, we're all a little self-absorbed. And I want to know, what's God doing in my life? You right, know? right. So, yeah. What's going on? Yeah. And um, so <laughs> so this is, is um, I believe this is, is a good thing. The, mm. Just there's, a, there's value in, in pulpit preaching, by all means. Uh, but personally, I enjoy a dialogue, too. Uh, because I always have something to say, right? <laughs> I enjoy a dialogue, and um, uh, it's I, I and I really enjoy um, our dialogue. I think we have a rich uh, dialogue around the table, and it's uh, and it's fun. Yeah, and it's a joy. <laughs> it's a yeah. joy. It's more than fun. Well, you know, uh, I, you know, uh, 
the analysis of the prowess of the church, maybe, but I think we're also, oh. you know, led to examine our faith and uh, our experience with the Lord. So, indeed, uh, that's what we do, you know. And uh, I, I know the question, and uh, you know, the question that was raised at that party, <laughs> and I, I can't wait to see what's in the study. All right, because, because well, of my, yeah. my uh, a special well, edition out. this morning, I had no <laughs> the papers. I'm not going to no, pass out. <laughs> I, had, I had no uh, no chance to take a look at the study at all. Okay. Um. So we'll be posting that after after the fact. Okay. Uh, adding the blog, uh, the podcast to it. Terrific. So here we are, and the subject of uh, today's study is blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm-hmm. And uh, so just uh, as a precursor, or uh, this is not an introduction necessarily. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get the next week. It's not necessarily an, intro, uh, an introduction to uh, a larger study on the, on the Beatitudes, right. because that's what we're drawing it from, the first Beatitude. <clears throat> Matthew 5, um, 3 is the first one. Yes, Matthew 5, 3. And, and the rest of the verse says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Ours is the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. Embracing um, uh, poverty of, of spirit is um, is uh, a pathway. I, I wouldn't say it's the, the key way necessarily, mm. but uh, we know that embrace, embracing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is the uh, uh, unlocks the door. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so on the surface, this seems like a contradiction, and this is the point that the, uh, a deacon... Uh, uh, question mark <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, raised at the at the graduation party mm-hmm. on the surface this seems like a contradiction mm-hmm. what about the abundant life that Jesus promised in John 10 10 mm-hmm. right you know right. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly what's up with this poverty of spirit stuff I, uh, this is not sounding like the abundant life mm-hmm. uh, also in in second Corinthians 8 uh, 9 uh, Paul mm-hmm. writes for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Right. So mm-hmm. these are uh, verses, of course, that the prosperity gospel mm-hmm. uh, highlight and endorse, and and um, you know they have it on their marquee and their banner and their the sign on on the front of the church, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, whenever we over fixate on on one verse of scripture and and don't seek to uh, find the the balance, mm-hmm. Susanna's uh, favorite word, which I agree with her. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't seek to find the balance. I, I think we become <clears throat> uh, out of uh, kilter, you know, with the whole canon of, of mm-hmm. scripture. Uh, I think and, it's interesting because um, last night when we when I was doing my jail ministry Bible study mm-hmm. with the, the young lady there, <clears throat> we were we were doing we we're going through the proverbs. So we did Proverbs eight and nine last night, and those are the wisdom yeah. proverbs because we've been we've been talking about women in the Bible, and I said let's look at this because we had seen that wisdom was personified as a woman, mm-hmm. and it talks about wisdom is better than rubies and silver and gold and all this kind of stuff. I said, and yet there's another spot where it says the wisdom will make you you know prosperous. Mm. I said it's a different kind of prosperous, mm-hmm. right? It's a prosperous of your soul. It's a prosperous of your 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 spirit. It's a prosperous of your relationship with other people. Mm. Um, we're not talking about amassing and like Arthur just said, the the prosperity you know gospel. gospel that's out there. And we and I talked with her about that. I said you have to be really careful. She said, Yeah, I've I've I listened to Joel Joel Olson and you know I said Olstein, yeah I mean, Olstein. Olstein, okay yep. and and um, sorry Joel I know you're listening yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Grapple <laughs> Dollar and I'm not negating their their premise of of the gospel uh-huh. but I am questioning this constant prosperity sure right thing right. <clears throat> so, but it's interesting that you bring that up because poor mm. in spirit doesn't necessarily mean that you're you have to be, what were they called, aesthetics mm, yeah, back yeah, in the that's day? Right. Yep. All right, well, let's not, <clears throat> let's not give away the, the goods here, okay? <laughs> we, we, we're She's getting... just intuitive. She probably hasn't you know, looked at the end of the study either. No, I did just, not look at the end you know, of the study. Making, I know, uh, I know making she did. An informed conclusion, that's all. Um, mm. So uh, many of the commentaries, or, or several of the commentaries that I, I looked at, <clears throat> had a... Had a, a a consistent theme of, of, of focusing on the word poor 
as if poverty is is some sort of a virtue and we see that seep into the church really yeah. with the uh, ascetics in in the third century mm-hmm. um also <clears throat> um, again drawing out of roman uh, catholic tradition because you know before the reformation that was that was uh, that, that was the church and that's all we had uh, certainly groups like the franciscans for instance right. the roman just to explain you know roman catholicism has is has you you select an order like the jesuits or the redemptorists or the um benedictines, benedictines or, yeah you select an order to which you you're determined to follow and franciscans is one and the franciscans take a vow of poverty you can always tell the franciscans because they wear the brown or gray robes with Mm. the uh rope belt tied around them Mm -hmm. and they take a vow of poverty Um, now we're going to unpack that a little bit because you know their poverty does not look the same as the poverty of like uh uh, a million young people starving in Haiti. That's a different poverty. Okay, right, so uh, right. um, uh, that's that's par that's poverty. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh, so it's you know this po- poverty is is perceived in in some sectors of the church as as a virtue. Um, how do we balance that w- w- one with the prosperity gospel? Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, we, we, uh, it's interesting that Luke's version of this mm-hmm. verse um, excludes the qualifying clause and does, in fact, speak outwardly of outward poverty. It just says, blessed are the poor, right? So uh, immediately we're tempted to call to mind verses like, uh, Matthew 23, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm mean, sorry, Matthew 19, 23. It's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. And then uh, Luke 18, 23, and Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler who went away sad because you know he had great riches. Right. Uh, also Luke uh, 19, uh, uh, 16, 19 to 31, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, right. where the, the rich man had his comforts, he had his blessing on earth. Lazarus was poor. So it, it seems as though these accounts, these uh, narratives are, <clears throat> are suggesting that there's some you know, great virtue in 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 poverty uh and uh, that we do know that indeed riches uh, distract us right and we get we get distracted with our stuff with our mm. little toys with uh i remember reading something <clears throat> once out of the uh i think this was uh, out of, uh, maybe confucius writings or, or buddhist or very eastern Confu- says, have, confusion con- the confusion <laughs> no, gentlemen. yeah he said have no possessions that none may possess you right um also a very interesting equation that said happiness which bless you know, the word in the Beatitudes, the word blessing rightfully translates to happy or happiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, happiness can be written as an equation that reads um, desires over fulfillment. Mm-hmm. So happiness equals desires over fulfillment. And there's two ways to approach that equation. One is that you can have substantial desires. But so long as you fulfill them, you'll be happy. Right. The other way to approach that equation is to reduce the numerator <laughs> right. uh, very to something very small, and that makes the satisfaction very simple and easy, and then you... Right. you, you the less you, desires, the more less, happiness. Exactly, you know, so. yeah. yeah. Or, so. or if you have more desires, you're going to have to have more fulfillment. Right, you know, exactly. E- equal oneness right <laughs> there you, you go if you equal your desires to your equals to your fulfillments you become literally one 
I, <laughs> I only bring this stuff up for Mark's sake because right. I know he's going to fill in the gaps. Well, there's so many gaps, you know. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in terms of the uh, he knows. the, he the knows. Roman Catholic tradition, the you know uh, there was a push for discipleship, and you know uh, everyone wasn't meeting that, so they invented the, the monastic orders to you know for the spiritual superstars that were going to abandon the the world for yes. the sake of the kingdom of God. So. Sure. So there's that, and yeah. um, uh, in the verses you drawn out about the the riches, uh, it wasn't really, and it's it's funny because the emphasis we put on things can can flip it, um, but the the emphasis in those verses about the rich young ruler and the rich man and Lazarus, and it's difficult for the rich to enter heaven is that riches are a hindrance a hindrance to entering the kingdom because they draw us away from the Lord. Right. Not right. that it's good to be poor. Right. Um, but exactly. you can easily uh, make the wrong conclusion and go, oh, we got to get rid of all, you know, because Jesus uh, told the rich young ruler, get all ri- rid of your stuff if you want to go to heaven. So we got to be dirt poor exactly. to go to heaven. And that's not the, you know, that's not a proper understanding of it. Um, I agree. You know, that we have to be poor uh, materially to, to be rich spiritually. And, it, you know, the whole concept of, of Poor people are closer to God, and that's not necessarily true either. You know, right? Not yeah. I know just are, because I know you're some poor, poor people, and <laughs> just because you're I know poor. people who choose to be poor, mm-hmm. and whether it's from mental illness or from you know abuses or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're not the nicest people, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right, because and they're embittered by their status. Exactly. Uh, the they're, Lord, look what the Lord did to me. I'm exactly. dirt poor. I'm living, you know, in, in horrible conditions because He didn't, you know, give me better opportunities in life and whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. and that may or may not be true. And right. Better and opportunities. They they were there. It's just that yeah. some people don't take them. Right. Exactly. I, I can't help but think and that usually we just stumbled upon Naomi's testimony from the book of Ruth. Mm. <laughs> uh, right, because uh, everything went wrong for God. her. They and went so, to a foreign land. Yeah, and... which says there's redemption for people like that too. You know, even when you've hit rock bottom and mm. you're shaking your fist at God and saying, you know, you're the source of my uh, uh, brokenness. Uh, um, you know, God hears the cries of his people like the... Uh, people suffering in in Egypt for 400 years under the bondage of slavery. He yeah. hears the cries of his mm. people and is is willing to, and anxious to swoop in and, and offer redemption. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So which is which should it be? Should should we be rich or should we be poor? Uh, this is a confusion. I I, uh, I I I ping pong on this every day. Mm. <laughs> when I you know when I get up on Monday morning and I hit the ground running, I, uh, you know I, I'm I'm. Uh, uh, engaging my business activities, not because uh, uh, I I just want to muse out uh, mm. over uh, enjoy the the smell of the sawdust and <laughs> things of that sort. I, I, no, I, I want to make some money here, baby. Right. Come on, yeah. bring it on. Let's go. Right, right. <laughs> so right. I love Proverbs thirty eight and nine, which says, "Give me neither poverty nor riches." Feed me with the food allotted me, mm-hmm. lest I uh, be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of the Lord, of my God. So there's the balance that yeah. uh, Susanna yeah. uh, uh, loves to uh, uh, embrace and, and, and point out in, in our midst. Uh, mm-hmm. This finding a, a balance in the full canon of Scripture with what God is, is trying to convey to, to us as mm-hmm. kids is can be tedious uh, and so often just out of convenience we will flip to one side or the other mm. and, and and just really walk in denial of whatever the contrary um, message is mm. uh, and that's this is why I, personally I love to read and listen to um, you know uh, uh, theological uh, perspectives that are are, are a little bit contrary, you know, to the one, you got to go to a church somewhere. I'm not suggesting that everybody should just float around and go from church to church and not embrace. You got to go to church somewhere. And as soon as you walk into the door of a church, there's going to be a theological perspective under that, uh, under those arches, you know, and and, and once you walk through that door jam. Um, And, uh, and you're going to want to flow with that. You you, you don't, you know, you don't want to go into a church and be the agent. I'm going to change all these people. I'm going to enlighten them. I'm going to, you know, wake everybody up. No, this, this that's a that's a bad attitude right there. <laughs> but I, I do like to um, listen to. Uh, I feel that I, I I learn a great deal uh, from 
reading Catholic writers and and mm -hmm. uh, used to listen to. Uh, is it ESPN or EWTN? EWTN. ESPN. <laughs> ESPN is what I like. ESPN is the, uh, the sports network. Right. Yeah. That's my channel, remember, yeah. dear? Try not to confuse those two, okay? Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I love to uh, oh. listen to the, the reformers, the reform tradition. So, um, so we've, we've covered this proverb, this proverb. So Matthew, uh, the Matthew passage does speak of being poor in spirit, spirit. and that's what I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. I w would like to spend some time looking at this word spirit. Uh, I would go, I would almost go so far as to say that earthly riches and or poverty really have no consequence in God's e economy. God uses the rich, rich people. Mm -hmm. He uses uh, poor people, poor folk. Uh, he uses in between people. He does not discriminate. Uh, he's not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he needs to repent of anything. No respecter of persons. No mm. respecter of persons. And so um, he uses uh, uh, gold as pavement in heaven. Just want right, right. <laughs> to point that out, okay? okay. So <laughs> A little flashy there. Uh, a little bling going on in the kingdom. A, a little bling, or you could look at it as though, <laughs> hey, this is this stuff is just pavement. Yeah, uh, it's just, yeah. It's yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah so, yeah, right. No, right. It's, it's no, not, it's not a, so precious here. It's just something right. we tread upon. Yeah. And it talks about a gate made out of pearls. Well, right. So it's a gate. You know, gates yeah. just come it's and just go. A gate. It's just a gate. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. So whenever we see uh, a seeming contradiction in Scripture, we must look deeper to the essence of, of what God's saying to us. Um, just a, another small example of that is there are just as many Scriptures that say to judge as to say not to judge. Right. Uh, so what do you what do you do with that? How, how do how do we reconcile these things? And and uh, it, it's always uh, reconciliation is always a matter of the heart. We want to look mm -hmm. at the heart condition mm -hmm. uh, and not these outward trappings. Okay, mm -hmm. so oh, you're rich, you must be blessed, brother. Wow, yes, wow, I am. You know? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking about in spirit, though. Oh, okay. oh, oh. What do, you, what do you uh, so, mean by that? <laughs> what do you well that's what I that's that's what I want <laughs> what to get to today. That? Because this word spirit, you know, we're gonna focus on the word spirit, is a very interesting word. This is a very interesting right. word. And to some extent it lacks definition. Right. Uh, often getting inappropriately mingled with the word soul. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you look up soul in any uh, Bible dictionary or the Strong's or in a lineal or any of that, mm -hmm. it gives uh, spirit as a definition. And if you look up the word spirit, it gives soul as a definition. Yikes. So they've created this closed circle of definition that really doesn't tell you anything. Mm. Um, and so there's this uh, huge uh, mysterious element to the word spirit and the spirit realm uh, Mark did a great piece of uh, uh, drawing from uh, Neil Anderson uh, on Thursday. I'd encourage everybody to, to look at that, uh, scroll back and, and look at that, about um, the, the spiritual realm in, in terms of the spiritual realm of darkness. Right. And, 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 and yeah, part of last week's study was, uh, you know, looking at, you know, uh, spirit beings versus us versus animals in terms of our, our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. So yes. There's some foundational yes. stuff there in that lesson. Right. It is foundational stuff, but it's foundational stuff that we often gloss over. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, the church is also too. not in full agreement. This is why right. I like to listen to right. the church is often not in full agreement. I had um, I had uh, uh, a conversation. I, I used to have have lunch every uh, Wednesday and every Saturday with a, a, a Orthodox priest and a, a Catholic priest. And a rabbi. Uh, and, a, and a rabbi. Yeah. This is not a joke. No, they weren't golfing. Okay. We didn't no, play golf. There was okay. no rabbi. <laughs> there was no rabbi. It would have been fun <laughs> to have Rabbi Freed in, in that conversation. Right. I think it would have. But um, we had lunch, would have lunch together, and we'd uh, mix it up uh, pretty good. Uh, mm. And the Catholic priest particularly, we became very friendly. And he was a brilliant guy. He was actually was a trained in medical medicine. He was uh, had had his uh, 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 yeah he had his certification in medicine and everything. He abandoned that hmm. and went into the priesthood. Wow. So he was a brilliant guy, and but he really de denied this notion or understanding of any 
distinction, I'll say, not separation, I'll say distinction, between soul and spirit. Right. And it's interesting, uh, and I didn't refresh this view, but I remember years ago looking at the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia in the library because you know, you know, I'm ancient of days here, and we actually used to go to a library, library with, and look mm-hmm. in books, books at the that time. You would find with the yeah. yeah. catalog. <laughs> but if you go to the Catholic, uh, li- uh, Catholic Encyclopedia and you look up the word spirit, you get about two paragraphs. If you look up the word soul, you get about 18 pages. Mm. So it, it kind of hyper fixated on that and less mm. so on, on, on the word spirit. But mm. so I, I, I'm trying to draw out the, the understanding that um, the, this is a complicated uh, word and, and it's shrouded in mystery. The scripture teaches us in at least two places that I am uh, uh, love to uh, quote that the spirit is distinct and separate. Hebrews 4.12, a very popular verse that we used last week when we were talking about division. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, (laughs) piercing even, this is talking about the word of God, piercing even Even to to the the division division of of soul and spirit. spirit. So if there is division, um, there's there's distinction, right? There's a a little bit of a a, a separation of essence in some respect. And then in uh, 1 Thessalonians, in the salutation, Mm -hmm. uh, Paul says in 523, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here (laughs) we see... um, that uh, yeah, if it's well, all yeah. if soul and spirit are all the same, what are these divisions? What are the, the division between the two, and you know these separate references? Sure. And the one I love to throw out there for the Catholics is from uh, Mary's blessing, where she says um, something to the it. fact when my soul expresses my the yeah, Lord yeah, yeah, and my magnif Lord. and my spirit, ma- you know, my yes. spirit it's two says different it's two different things. Yeah. Mary, Mary is saying. Yeah. Um, so. You That's know, good. Thank there's you. There's something, Thank something you. there. I, I was trying to, I was struggling for the reference, but my phone is this, the actively engaged. No, it's so, uh, it's, no, uh, it's in Luke, uh, Luke's gospel. We yeah, can, like Luke we can, two. We can turn there. Yeah, it should be Luke two or three. The exact yeah. same reference, but I didn't. Yeah. It's early on in the gospel hmm. story of Luke. It's um, flipping of pages. Forty-six. Forty-six. Okay, good. Forty-six. And Mary said, "My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior." Now, this, see, there we go. Now, um, the teaching I, I drew from that verse in, in terms of function of the soul and spirit to differentiate the two. Um, she says her soul magnifies the Lord, mm-hmm. and that's that's our mind, will, and emotions right. speaking mm-hmm. about God, praising the Lord, to let other people know we're magnifying, uh, yes. ma- magnifying with our soul. That's mm-hmm. the function mm-hmm. of our soul to magnify the Lord, let people know about our faith, mm-hmm. and our spirit rejoices. That's communion with the Lord, mm-hmm. a direct that's connection. Mm-hmm. Our right. spirit is a direct connection to the Lord, mm-hmm. um, where we get to commune from him you know raise our hearts up to him and commune we commune with him the the communications both ways um he's giving stuff into our spirit that'll come through our soul Mm -hmm. so we have revelation or moves us to go in certain ways Mm -hmm. and that communion so it's it's active you know through the spirit that's good good. thank you mark that's That's, uh similar to the the definition of the difference between praise and worship praise is horizontal and, and worship is is vertical. vertical. So praise is telling other people around you about the goodness and, and majesty of God. God doesn't need to be magnified because He's <laughs> he is. everywhere, he is yeah. everywhere, and everything. But in our eyes, He needs to be magnified. Right. And in the in and and for us to convey, for us to be the uh, magnifying glass for people around us to say, look, look what the Lord has done. Remember we used to sing that song, look what the Lord has done. It's one of those camp meeting songs, uh, tent meeting songs. Mm -hmm. The next verse in that says, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. So here's lowly state is an inference towards poverty or a poverty of spirit. Mary was poor in spirit. (laughs) Blasphemy. Wow. Imagine. dare you. So um, here we have... um, uh, it, the Thessalonians passage and what you know the, this passage from Luke about Mary identifies 
us as triune beings. Not surprising since we're made in the image and the likeness of God, according mm-hmm. to Genesis 126. It identifies us as triune beings. We, uh, some people put it this way, we, we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body. Uh, all Like trying to define the Trinity, all these definitions have problems, okay? Mm-hmm. Consubstantiality, all those things. We are equally soul, body, and spirit. Um, but yet there's an undeniable essence to this where we don't shrink back from trying to put some meat so to speak you know mm-hmm. not just the flesh but mm-hmm. trying to put some meat on on the on the definition so that we can understand who we are mm-hmm. and what god expects of us mm-hmm. and, and and is trying to accomplish in us and through us mm-hmm. so just as the holy spirit is perhaps the most mysterious person of the godhead so likewise our spirit man or spirit nature is mysterious to to us there's there's a an element of of mystery uh involved here deuteronomy 29 29 says the the concealed things belong to the lord but the revealed things belong to you and to your children Mm -hmm. okay so that's uh we 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 want to look into and understand what is revealed to us and it's not just so that we can be uh, puffed up or or uh you know, because knowledge puffs up, but only love edifies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's so that we can just get that, like like Pastor was saying uh, last week about the different, uh, you know, what was that? Using a different optics, optics, yeah. so optics. Using it and and making that that uh, those binoculars come into focus. Mm-hmm. We want to see God more clearly. Right mm-hmm. now, we see through a mirror dimly. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I see through a mirror dimly. Yeah, it's pretty dim sometimes. It's my my some, understanding. Oh man, I'm telling you. But um, every now and then we get a glimpse, and that just rivets our, our faith, and 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 those are those are exciting times and experiences. Mm. So, uh, Mark, I heard you flipping. Yeah, Did I'm you there. pick up uh, First, Corinthians? First Corinthians? Okay, please read First Corinthians two, six, six through to 16. sixteen. Okay, and picking it up, and uh, verse six. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God, and in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have have entered into the heart of man the thing, things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. Mm-hmm. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Mm -hmm. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but with which the Holy Spirit teaches, Mm -hmm. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Mm-hmm. That's a great passage, man. For, I love that. You want to, you want to, you want to make a case for the Spirit, Holy Spirit, our Spirit. Yes. You know, and and what comes through, and how how we we become part of the kingdom of God through through being introduced to the things of God. That's the passage you want to give. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. It doesn't fill in all the gaps. Right. There's still a huge threshold of, of mystery here, but that's okay because I love mystery in mm-hmm. God. Because if I if I solve all the mystery of God, then guess what? Then I'm God and I'm not. Right. <laughs> you know, really, right. let's clarify that. I always and, want to clarify and, that. And it really points um, out the dichotomy yeah. between the believer and the non-believer. Yes. What he thinks it's foolishness. Yeah. And how do you understand these things? Well, they're spiritually discerned. Well, um, like you know, your, your study on Thursday night, this passage points out that there is a, the spirit of the world. Mm. 
and there's a there is a so we're going to talk a little bit about there's a, a war there's a conflict going on but there's you know there's a there's a spirit of darkness as well right uh so this spiritual realm um is uh is uh, uh complex and and rich and real uh, our born again experience is a spiritual birth into the spiritual realm. One new man from Ephesians 2.15, or, or a perfect man from Ephesians 4.13. So, uh, again, there's there's different teaching out there. Uh, uh, there's, you know, for instance, some some uh, Bible scholars and teachers profess that the, the spirit is dead or dormant yep. within us bef- mm-hmm. uh, before it is mm-hmm. awakened yep. by... Um, by Christ or, or by thinking. our confession, uh, others will say that you, 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 it's non-existent. You, you don't have a spirit uh, that um, uh, you know it, it manifests. It. Uh, but then again, that would almost deny the, the spirit of darkness. You know, I think that the Scripture is clear that we walked in the spirit of our own flesh mm. uh, uh, before uh, enlightenment, before coming to know Christ. So. Uh, yeah, and then, I, you, I, then you I, have, you know, yeah, because so, so does he have a dead spirit? Does he, is there is no spirit in him? Right. And then we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And sure. I, I say that, you know, our, our spirit is dead, it's dormant. And then we get the indwelling uh, presence of the Holy Spirit to quicken us or, yes. or make it alive. And Indeed. we become, you know, I go through Neil Anderson's teaching. Yes. says we become spiritually alive when we believe in Christ. Yes. Mm-hmm. When we place our faith in him. I and that, and I think that's the difference when you talk to people who try to read the Bible mm-hmm. and they say it's confusing or they don't understand it or it's just, you know, it's just stories or whatever. And and then you meet someone who really loves the Lord and has that that awakened spirit mm-hmm. part. and we hear something like we were listening to something this morning about uh you know rachel and and uh, the babies and yeah. leah and all that kind of thing and and just things that were were recognized from from those two the stories and he's saying there's so much more there there's so much mm-hmm. more depth yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not just a story about two women that happen to be bitterly in battle over the the one husband wanting to have children. It's more. There's more depth to it. There's there's some spiritual discernment that needs mm-hmm. to come through those things. Talking about, um, yeah, how God uses dysfunctional people. Right. Yeah. And right. It's, <laughs> and it's not just intellectual and lofty thinking. No. Because it's it's these are these are patterns and um, and principles. That we can see, and we can do the math and apply them to our own lives and right. say, "Oh, yeah," because we, you know the Bible says that the Old Testament is just for our an example, you know, for for us. Right. Uh, and and in the old schoolmaster, we see um, uh, narratives of New Testament principles. Mm. You know, sure. So uh, we recognize that there is opposition in this realm which spills over into the carnal world so ephesians back back to ephesians again 6 12 says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual oh there it is again spiritual, wow. hosts. spiritual hosts of wickedness there are spiritual mm-hmm. hosts of wickedness oh, really yes. uh, yeah. you know uh, uh derek prince used to say um uh you know you can't convince a, a witch doctor from Haiti that he doesn't have power. Right. Oh. And and, and got a, power. a lot of that power it's is manifest. Power of darkness. We yes. know that the enchanters and the magicians in in Egypt mm. recreated some of uh, uh, Moses' miracles. Right. Sure. So sure. Um, they had so power. There they, is power. They, there is power, and yeah. we're wrestling with spiritual hosts of of wickedness in in heavenly places mm-hmm. in. In the spirit. Yeah. Okay. And people listening to us need to recognize that. Yeah. Um, again, I was talking with another person in school who was talking about, oh, do you know about Ouija boards? And I was like, yeah, I know about Ouija boards. They're dangerous. Yeah. People, they're, they yeah. create an opening, an open door in your heart and your in your life for wicked things to happen, bad things. And she said, yeah, yeah, bad things do happen. Mm-hmm. People need to be aware. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we look at them as just very benign or fun. Look at how the world has um has has uh kind of served this stuff up as oh it's just it, it everything is is decreed as fun now 
and I, and I was thinking back yesterday, even at some of the look at some of the stupid TV shows that we use. That television is a vehicle for. Right. I'm telling <laughs> well, that's you, what we, teach. we used to watch Bewitched. Right. And, and, well, that, you know, and she witch, was, yeah, she was just a normal uh, housewife and, and blah, blah, blah. Spells and it, yeah. all this stuff. And, and we thought that this is, was uh, is just... dangerous. And that's what I teach on Thursday night through uh, right. Anderson's Bondage Breaker. It's, it's, it warns right. of the dangers of the occult and how it yep. impacts Christians. That yeah. we can, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. even Christians who have given themselves to the Lord, mm-hmm. can be oppressed by, by the spiritual darkness. I think that's very clear. You know. Mm, um, absolutely. I you totally might have agree. a theological different uh, take on that, but let me tell you, there's an experiential reality and, about and that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. And within the body of Christ, uh, those those oppressions manifest through you know addictions, through depression, depre- you know, and. Uh, uh, and, and the ability not to be able to study the Bible as well as they would like, and mm-hmm. distraction, you know, distraction and prayer, all these things sure. can right. point to not just the flesh and the world, but also the enemy, the devil. Very so, clear. Very clear. Um, our, the aim is a, a spiritual union uh, or, or a marriage, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. First mm-hmm. Peter 2 5 says, You also, as living stones, are being built up. A spiritual house, mm-hmm. a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through, through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that we are um, uh, moving into the place where the veil is is taken away. What, what, what the Catholics call the beatificial uh, form of the word beatitude, the mm-hmm. beatificial vision mm-hmm. of Christ, which speaks of the face to face relationship yeah. with Christ, mm-hmm. uh, which. In, in in Roman Catholic theology is is really only available to the saints, you know everybody right. else has to go by by way of right. purgatory. And, and <laughs> their definitions of the saints are those who are the 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 upper echelon. Yeah, of the, exactly. The sure. superstars of our superstars, faith. Superstars, exactly. Whereas the biblical definition of saints is all believers of Christ. Well, that's the one I seem to read, keep reading right. in all the epistles and <laughs> the introduction to all the epistles. And as a believer. Yeah. It has nothing to do with being a superstar. It has to do with service. Right. right. Jesus taught to be a servant. Jesus right. mm-hmm. spoke to be a servant. Jesus showed people how to be a servant. Mm-hmm. And that was not what they wanted. They right. wanted a warrior king. Mm-hmm. But the spirit of, of the, the gospel is not this rah-rah, no. back to prosperity, right. back to riches, back to owning you know a Cadillac and all these. Mm-hmm. Not saying that you can't own those things. Yeah. I'm just simply saying... You need to be careful because that's not what Jesus is teaching. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's a different. The kind highest of, among you will be the servant of all. Exactly, it's a different kind and of. The, the Roman Catholic saints were servants to the faith, so they were. But, they were not but, again, but, not to uh, we're all, diminish. Like you said, or, there's or an equal to, footing at the cross for all of us. So yeah, I, you know, I, if if we are jealous of those saints, that's we the gospel. We'll serve the Lord. That's <laughs> the gospel I see. Otherwise, exactly. it's it's not good news. It's just it's just. Um, uh, regular old old news, bad news, which is oh, I have to right. strive, like I have, have to try have, harder. Right. Your I efforts will give grind. you some yeah, better status. Will, yeah, um, um, you know we're all the same in status, and we are, or we all have different functions in the right. body. You know whether exactly. we be rich or poor too. So right. again, to right. return to our theme, that takes our earthly standing um, mm-hmm. off the table here. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It really is of no consequence in in God's economy. He will. You know, he'll use the rich, he'll use the poor, uh, and um, uh, the, I think uh, uh, the more accurate uh, commentaries, uh, I believe, uh, to po- is to point to the need for spiritual bankruptcy, mm-hmm. which, um, uh, you know, my, my uh, uh, Jack Hayford uh, commentary, just uh, from, from, I've got a Jack Hayford uh, uh, study Bible, no, that's your oh, that's, that, that's your Jimmy Chuck Swagger. Swindoll. Uh, we're, Jimmy, we're, Swagger. Uh, Jimmy Swagger. We'll we'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> Just hang on there, Jimmy. I know you're listening. Um, it, it speaks to this this understanding of of spiritual bankruptcy in order to fully depend upon Christ. Mm. And um, so what? It, it it actually doesn't doesn't say much. But it does point out that um, uh, this is the Jack Hayford com- commentary. The disciples include beatitudes includes a pronouncement of blessing, a description of the ones considered as blessed, and an explanation of the blessing. The 
Poor in spirit are those who recognize their spiritual poverty and casting aside all self um, dependence seek God's grace. Mm-hmm. There you go. So that's huge and, and that's big. What is, it, it occurred to me to think or ask myself the question anyway, what, what is poverty? Well, well, poverty is the absence of ownership. Mm-hmm. And um, it, and again, to, to just to step out of the material realm into the spiritual realm, um, you know, I, well, I got nothing to bring to the table here spiritually mm. in and of myself. Right. I'm just a temporal, you know, carnal guy born 1958, you know. My passing away is written in, in right. is, uh, is, there is uh, ordained, you know, and, um, and and that's it. And it will be chiseled on a stone somewhere and, and whatever will happen to that will happen to that. Uh, so right, I did nothing. So yeah, I'm yourself, spiritually dead you, in and right. of myself. There's not, that, you that's, know, you have a, that's poverty. You have a, a, and nothing, to know, offer. a nothing to offer because uh, in and of yourself you can, you know, you You'll be you'll be separated from God. Mm. Um, it's through God that mm. that our spiritual destiny will be discerned. Yeah. So this uh, spiritual bankruptcy, in order to fully depend on Christ, as a little child, fully depends upon its parents. Wow! Mm-hmm. Didn't Jesus say that somewhere? Boy, he really knew what right. he was talking about. Wow! <laughs> he he really weaves this stuff. <laughs> Jesus is the ultimate rabbit trail guy. Yeah, you know, he and, goes on these rabbit trails right. and then brings it around and, and says, said, "Oh, by the way, you need to be like little children." And he said, "You know, he also said, I do nothing of my own will. I do everything in the will of the Father.' Yes, and I say nothing except what the Spirit. Yeah. right. He says nothing about what the Spirit tells him. Right. So that's indeed. dependence. That's dependence, indeed. Yeah. And, and to admit that and to say that. And and what about us to be able to say that? Uh, again, um, the uh, as much as I love um, you know, the guys on the White Horse Inn and, and the intellectual perspective that we, we bring to the scripture, um, <clears throat> you got to, uh, you know, wonder uh, about... Uh, this sometimes uh, that how how much is is contrived or or just really um, uh, learned and distilled and and hyper analyzed and figured out speculated um, speculated on <laughs> <laughs> and analyzed yeah. you know analysis is the paralysis Google, Google. Google it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you know I we, we want to read the scripture. Um, out of this this passionate love affair uh, for God, uh, that we we we're hungry to to know Him, uh, even in the power of His resurrection and even the fellowship of His suffering. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, God, I want to know You more. I want to know You more intimately. Mm-hmm. I want to know You more perfectly. I want to see every every glimpse, every nuance of that diamond. I want to turn it and 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 gaze upon it and drink it in. Um, not that I, not that we want to, we, we want to figure you out. Uh, again, I think that the marriage um, uh, <clears throat> well, poverty is lack pattern, of, lack of ownership, and we we want to uh, have a, a sense of ownership in His kingdom and in Him as a person. Yeah, yeah. I I, I touch upon yeah I touch upon that on my last point. I, I, I just I was musing on that very subject. Um, but look at let's look at the marriage motif mm. for uh, just a, a, a moment. Yep. Um, I don't I don't really long to to figure Susanna out. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, she wishes you would. That's that's a half truth. Okay, that's a half truth. I'm sorry. Let <laughs> well. me just fess up here. There are times that I really do want to figure okay. Susanna out. Right. But you know, I'm not engaging and prodding and poking, trying to hyper figure her out Mm. i just love her and and every nuance every you know new little glimpse that i get is is captivating Mm. and intoxicating it really is Mm. and i think that should be our our approach to to scripture like how many times do you say say i never like we're listening (laughs) to the white horse in who said i never saw that i never knew that yeah you never lose your sense of wonder yeah never lose your sense of wonder and that's Ricky, the thing Ricky, about don't children. lose your one. one. Oh, now, well, you know, you guys keep bringing oh, up these terrible songs that yeah. date us, darling. Yeah. But it is one of those things where where you've got to be able to read the scripture and not 
go, oh, I'm just reading the scriptures yeah. again. I gotta do this again. Exactly. Oh my gosh, I gotta do it. No, 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 no. Hmm. I often, and Arthur will con- attest to this, we often sometimes read something and I'll say, wait a minute. <laughs> he just put that in there. Mm-hmm. Jesus just wrote it because I don't remember seeing that before. Right. Right. But that's the exciting thing. Mm. That's what makes it exciting to read the scripture. That's yes, what it makes it exciting to come mm. here and talk with you guys and mm. yeah. and delve into these things and say, wow, I didn't think of it that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I thought of it this way, but I didn't think of it that way. Right. There's more to see. And it's, you know, my, just... my focus is always on seeking the Lord continually because... What do you get when you seek the Lord? Well, you, you, you get the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, it all comes through, through seeking him. Right. Sure, Indeed. sure. Uh, I, I mentioned here again, I just reiterate, I got ahead of myself, but this poverty speaks of lack of ownership. Mm-hmm. And the spiritual man is often, uh, the, or the spiritual realm is often the inversion of the natural realm. Uh, but but we do see glimpses of it in creation. So, like for instance, a, a, a subtle example of that is uh, in regard to finances. To mm-hmm. just to fold over to the subject of, of monies again. So, what is what you know? What does the scripture teach us in order to overcome um, financial challenges or, or bondages or things of that sort? It teaches us to give. Mm-hmm. Um, really, wow. Who thought of that idea? Right. <laughs> what a screwball. Uh, come on. You know, the world says, save, work yeah. harder, get yeah. a third job, etc., etc. Right. So the spiritual realm is often an inversion of the uh, the natural realm, and, and that's okay. Uh, the, uh, what, what was the, the passage uh, which talks about these men have turned the world upside down? Right. Or was mm-hmm. that one of the uh, no, uh, Paul in, in Athens a, or someplace like that? Right. And these men have turned the world upside down. No, they've turned the world upside uh, right side up, dude. Uh, right. Let's, let's get that straight because mm-hmm. that's the worldly perspective that these men have turned the world upside down. Mm. But the Spirit of God is, uh, is restoring all things to the way he created it and said it was good. Yeah. Genesis chapter 1. Everything he created, he said, was good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, we get glimpses in, uh, of, of the spiritual realm in, in creation, and this, but this is a place of mystery. We, again, I invoke uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. We see through a mirror dimly. Right. Uh, one commentary used... Uh, so one commentary, this was the Jimmy Swaggart, used the uh, term uh, moral poverty. I should, uh, honey, why don't you look that up for us in, in the uh, uh, Matthew uh, 5, uh, Blessed of the Four in Spirit. He talks about a, a moral poverty. Uh, but I, I personally feel that it's not the full extent of what's being expressed. I think there's just something more there because morality would fold us back onto the law again. Right. You know, it's just going like, yeah. to lead us right back it's down to the total uh, depravity of man and so on, like, you're right. no good. And like, yep. Yeah, well, now. it says it here, blessed or happy are the poor in spirit mm-hmm. and calls conscious of a moral poverty for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The moral characteristics of a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and these are to be apparent at the new birth so that it's absolutely necessary to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is now presented as spiritual, not physical. Mm-hmm. Sure. I'm speaking of this. The other thing that I have in, in my other commentary Bible over here is that it talks about being emptied of spiritual pride. Well, that's there good. You go. Yes, I, think I that, like that. I think that's that, Thank you, you know, moral that. and pride, you know, those kinds of things where we start mm-hmm. we start puffing ourselves up and saying, oh, yeah. I know all this stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, we're we're not theologians, as Arthur said in the beginning. Right. We're just right. average people. We just mm-hmm. happen to be Bereans yeah. and like to study out the Word. Right. Mm. But we can get spiritually prideful in that, yeah. too. So right. we have to be very careful. Paul mm-hmm. did. He pointed that out. He said, I was flowing in all righteousness, you know, of, of Judaism. Uh, mm-hmm. I was uh, doing was doing it all and, right. and, and studied and, and really. But all that I count as rubbish. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said. When you, there'll be a time when they will think they're doing God a favor mm, right. by persecuting you, mm-hmm. because they think that they are all spiritually all that in a bag of chips. And but we are supposed to be devoid of that spiritual pride. Right. Yeah. Indeed. Move it out. Move Indeed. it out. Move it out. <clears throat> Bankruptcy again. Mm-hmm. 
Um, morality, I said, would fold us back into the law. Perhaps, uh, just as a thought, this is just my musing here, uh, perhaps passionate desire compelled by the sheer beauty of his holiness, which woos us to yearn to be like him, is the compelling factor or the, the thing that's driving us. Satan longed to be like God, but in, in as by us, usurpation. He, he wanted to, he, he not only wanted to be like God, but he wanted to be God, okay? Uh, and you know, to kick God off. And to yeah. kick, kick God, you know, uh, you, you know, I'm moving in, God. Mm. Uh, so we don't come to it by usurpation. We're invited by, by way of marriage, right. okay? You know, uh, our marriage vows were, we shall become one. Right. And, and that's the sentiment that's expressed in in. Jesus' priestly prayer in in John 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, the oneness, uh, that that essence of 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 unity. Right. Where but uh, again, there's still there's still a, a mystery. The relationship. Yeah, there's still mm-hmm. this mystery aspect mm-hmm. that how, how can we be one? Again, the Trinity. Uh, still, people asking that question. Uh, I don't know, how can God be one and three at the same time? Well, apparently there's room for more because there's room for us too. Right. Uh, and somehow that's going to work out. <laughs> uh, and and it's a mystery as to how. I'm very mm-hmm. anxious to find out. Mm. Uh, but I have plans this afternoon, so we're, we're, so we're we'll not going to hold. Back. Okay, I have to hold on to <laughs> that. Things to do. <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah, we'll work on it continually. That's why we have to work on it continually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, the marriage motif is uh, so rich and beautiful in, in pointing us uh, uh, towards the, the essence of, of the things of, of God. You know, Susanna and I uh, don't just l- live under the um, constructs of, of a legal contract. Right. Um, it, there's a, a much deeper, richer um, essence in, 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 play, in, in play there. And even when she dyes her hair back to uh, uh, different colors. It's okay. It's diversity. That's the diversity. I'm being that... diverse. I'm right. keeping the spice of life in your in our uh, marriage. Indeed. Your it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> you don't mind if I don't try that, do you? Oh. I, I'm good with the... You're fine. You're fine. Right. I'm yeah. fine where I'm at. <laughs> so, I hope, uh, brother... Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to turn you on to the podcast today, but Brother Deacon, yeah. that this is, in, in some essence, answers some of the complexity of, of what's being expressed here. In yeah, this. we'll get his feedback and see if there's going to be a part two to this study. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure I will get feedback. Absolutely. Because oh uh, there guy. could be, uh, but we'll see what he says. Okay. Yeah. Mark, why don't you close this yeah. out? Please. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for yes. bringing us together to uh, discuss your word and yes, to I explore agree. the mystery of our faith mm-hmm. um, that says we're blessed when we're poor in spirit. Um, mm-hmm. But our blessing comes only when we come to you and, and, and lean on you mm-hmm. and who, who has the, the riches of, of grace and glory mm-hmm. to, to bestow onto anyone who would uh, put their faith in Christ the Son. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the worship that will happen upstairs. We ask for yes. you to bless Agreed. the proceedings in this house today. We pray Agreed. for you to bless the, the worship team and bless the, the, the pastor who delivers a message and of mm-hmm. course to bless the, uh, bless the entire congregation. Mm-hmm. Uh, let the Holy Spirit come in and anoint yes. all the proceedings yes. and to bring the people closer together as we all seek to be closer to you. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Lord, we just pray that um, you bring, uh, you know, watch over us and uh, guide our path as the week uh, pr- progresses and mm-hmm. that we yes, see Lord. each other once again here next week. In Jesus' mm-hmm. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.